Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're looking at Lucid. Lucid announces fourth quarter and full year 2022 financial results. This is extremely exciting as we've been discussing Lucid quite a lot recently. There's been a lot of things in the rumor media going on. So this is essential that we understand Lucid projections for this year, 2023. Now directly from Lucid's website, it says Lucid exceeds expectations. Annual production guidance with 3,493 vehicles in Q4 and 7,180 vehicles in the full year of 2023. So they got a little bit close to 10,000 vehicles. It's, it's, not, it's not ideal, but you know, hopefully they can do a lot better this year because Rivian last year, Rivian did 20,000 vehicles in productions and sales. So Lucid needs to find a way to keep up with that, in my opinion. You know, they they can't be doing these low numbers forever. And let me just tell you that Rivian will possibly be hoping to double their numbers this year or possibly even triple. Rivian is perhaps looking at building 40,000 vehicles to 60,000 vehicles this year. So I'd like to see Lucid try to accomplish 25,000 to 30,000. And I know that's a lot. You have to continue ramping up production and improving production. Now, let me just say this information came out yesterday and it seems as if it might have affected the stock price. It looks like the, on this information, the stock price fell quite rapidly. So this was the Lucid share from yesterday, trading day. Now, quite immediately upon trading day on Tuesday, the market fell quite rapidly for Lucid. The price was just around $10.92 and it fell almost immediately. So I'm not sure if it's this information that triggered that sell-off, but it, it seriously could be. So Lucid is now under $10 per share. Let's look at where they were before the buyout rumors began. So if we go back to the later part of January, you can clearly see that the price of Lucid was just around $9. So there's not a big difference with the price right now and the price back then. So slowly but surely, it looks like Lucid is returning back to where it used to be. And that could be around $8, $9 per share. We don't know how the rest of the week will go for Lucid, but it will be fascinating to find out. Because if this is the first wave of selling off the share, then there's possibly more to come. So let's look a little bit more on the numbers. So just around 3,493 vehicles produced in Q4 last year. And that was up by 53% subsequently. And of course, just over 7,000 vehicles produced in 2020, exceeding the annual production guidance of 6,000 to 7,000. Now, the Q4 earning is just over $257 million and an annual revenue of over $608 million. Additionally, ended the quarter with approximately $4.9 billion total in liquidity. And 2023 production guidance are between 10,000 to 14,000 vehicles. That's, that's again, doubling their numbers based on what they delivered last year. They built just around 7,000 last year. Um, they probably delivered less actually, but they built around 7,000. They're looking to build 14,000 this year. That would double the production what they did last year. Again, it's, it's not what I'm looking for. I'm hoping they could, I don't know, produce 20,000 vehicles by now, by, by 2023. But it looks like that could be a 2024 vision. That, that could be next year. So Lucid set a new standards with the longest range, fastest charging electric car in the market. Today announced financial results for its fourth quarter and full year ended of December 31st, 2022. So this statement is going is just going back to going back through what we have already been through. Now the company reported reservation of over 28,000 as of February 21st, 2023. Okay, not bad. Representing a potential sale of 2.7 billion. Even better. The reservation number does not include up to 100,000 vehicles under the agreement with the government of Saudi Arabia. By the way, I think those vehicles are supposed to start deliveries this year. Even more exciting for Lucin. So we've got a quote from the CEO and CTO, Chief Executive Officer and Chief Technical Officer. This is Peter Rawlinson, and I quote, Last year was a challenging year for everyone. Yet despite the extraordinary supply chain and logistics challenges, the team preserved with an unrelenting focus on delivering what we believe is the best luxury sedan on the market. 
Now Rollinson went on to say, Lucid Air has it all, industry leading range, exceptional driving dynamics, and superior performances all wrapped up in a truly elegant design with a spacious interior cabin. But more importantly, the technical advancements of Lucid Air or develop entirely in-house with the singular goal to advance the adoption of EV around the world by focusing on generations to come, Lucid Air is the quintessential luxury sedan. And our goal in 2023 is to amplify our sales and marketing efforts to get the amazing product into the hands of even more customers around the world. The CEO also has this to say as well. In addition to 2022, we scaled every part of our business while keeping a sharp focus on execution. In our first full year of production, we manufactured... 7,000 over just over 7,000 vehicles and delivered 4,369 vehicles, generating revenue of up to 608 million. You know, I think the revenue is pretty good. I'm not gonna lie, we don't know how much of that is profit, but that's pretty damn good revenue. You have to remember, these vehicles are quite expensive, they're not cheap vehicles. So, essentially, the profit on each vehicle should essentially be rather good. That's just my speculation, I could be wrong. Now, if any of you have any additional information you'd like from Lucid, you can always email them at media.lucidmotors.com. But I really wanted them to go for, I don't know, 20,000 vehicles this year. But I guess they're still a while away from, from doing that. By the way, let's not forget these, these new Lucid price reductions. This could affect the company profits and revenue. And we, we don't really know to what extent. Only time will tell. Let's look at what Yahoo has to say. All right, shares of Lucid trading down more than 9% after reporting fourth quarter earnings. Let's take a deep dive into the company's latest financial report with Jamie Perez, RF Lafferty, and co senior research analyst. Nice to see you, sir. So, needless to say, disappointing numbers. What jumps out to you? Well, the deliveries were a little weak. Uh, they uh, produced about 7,200 vehicles this year, but they delivered 4,400. So it's about 60% of the of cars they produce, they deliver. So that's a little weak. And, uh, you know, they missed revenues by 60 million. So we can see a little bit of a change of mix from the high end to more modest cars because, you know, Lucent is a high end uh, luxury uh, EV. But um, I'm not too concerned about this quarter. I'm really concerned about. Uh, the production number for 2023, which is up between 10,000 and 14,000. Yeah, Jamie, ab about that production number, what were you hoping to see? And in terms of the issues that they are having with delivering their vehicles, sure. certainly Lucid has been struggling with bottlenecks, quality control issues. Where does that stand from your checks? Right. Well, last year they estimated about 20,000 vehicles, so they cut their production guidance last year. So this year it's a little bit significantly trimmed down are you expected in the 20,000 run rate but uh i think what they're trying to do is uh, maybe achieve a more doable number given supply constraints so guidance between 10,000 and 14,000 it's pretty good uh not not great like you know somewhere like tesla which is the benchmark but uh you know well, for a startup ev produce tesla is so long away you just can't compare lucid and tesla I'd rather compare Lucid and Rivian. They started at a similar time. They started production and manufacturing at a similar time. Both companies had similar amount of attention from the global media. I think Rivian had a little bit more, but Lucid is, is wanting to go global. But it certainly looked like Rivian can focus on one area and they can just ramp out production. And at the moment, I'm more bullish on, on Rivian, way more bullish. So that's that's a key question. What I've been saying was, are they going to take the company private? That's the only reason they would choose to buy out all the shares. Why else? It's good to have the company public because that allows them to have another way to generate investment. Yeah. Well, I think once I, I think Lucy is going to build out their, their whole plant and build out the, the brand. And um, I'm not sure whether Saudi Arabia uh, fund is going to buy them out. Right. But. We know that Saudi Arabia wants to divest away from fossil fuel and more into EV. So this is go along with this strategy on uh, expanding into the EV market. So I think the the probability of expanding further is uh, is uh, huge. Hey, Jamie, where do you think Lucid stacks up here in terms of competition? Obviously, the number of vehicles that they produce deliver a fraction of what some of its competitors 
are doing? How are they going to compete given that disadvantage that they're at? And then also the fact that they're offering their own price cuts, their own $7,500 credit for just a couple of vehicles. Right, remember the uh, Lucid cars are premium vehicles, so they start about 72,000, could head up to 150. So it's a different market from Tesla, which is more consumer driven. This is more for the luxury uh, buyers. So um, there's not probably not a large EV buyer for the luxury market. Yeah, you just can't expect Lucid to ever deliver Tesla numbers. They're a luxury brand. You can compare them to Porsche, Polestar maybe, but even Polestar is a little bit of both, luxury and going for the general market. Polestar wants to do almost both. Anyway, that is it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe to see more. Leave a like, leave a comment, and of course, I'll see you in our next video.